We all have that one shining light in our lives. When they're around, it's only ever to complain about their problems, and no matter how much money you spend trying to fix them, you can never satisfy their demands despite giving tons of time and effort. For once, I'm not talking about my ex, I'm talking about the check engine light. What's the difference? <laughs> The EVAP leak is probably the single most common error code on XJs. From 1996 to 2001, they're equipped with a vacuum system that runs from the fuel tank to various other components before ultimately routing to the intake manifold, with the purpose of reusing unburnt fuel vapors to slightly boost NPG and conform to federal emission standards. The evaporative emissions control system is a pretty common thing on all cars after 1996 and in its early days went through some teething troubles very prevalent on the last of the XJs as they lived through the height of that era. In this video, I'll explain how an EVAP system works and point out some common failure points on the XJ to potentially help you track down that insignificant thorn preventing you from passing inspection. Firstly though, I should point out that XJ's 97 and earlier don't really have a sophisticated EVAP system. They use a much simpler but less effective system that basically just routes the fuel tank to a vacuum canister and then to the intake manifold. This earlier system doesn't have any checkpoints, sensors, or gauges to tell how much or little it's actually doing, so if you have an EVAP leak on a 97 or earlier Cherokee, you won't get an error code because they don't have any sensors to tell whether or not there is one. In 1998, to conform to increasingly strict emission standards, the XJ was forced to adopt an OBD2 compliant EVAP system. The basic idea is that because gasoline evaporates faster than my ex's loyalty, you're always going to get some unusable fuel vapors in the top of the gas tank. These fuel vapors cause the gas tank to pressurize, meaning every time you take off the gas cap, you're relieving pressure. Flammable pressure very flammable, pressurized gasoline, which, to say the least, is probably not a good thing. To prevent pressurization from even happening to begin with, fuel tanks dating back to well beyond the beginning of time itself have vent valves on top of them. These are also called rollover valves because in the event the vehicle is in a rollover crash, these valves will close by gravity, preventing gasoline from leaking all over the crash site. The vents are connected to hoses that plug into the intake manifold of the engine, which when running creates a vacuum, thereby sucking out any and all fuel vapors directly into the combustion chamber where they'll be burned in the natural cycle of the engine. The problem is that when the engine isn't running, the system isn't under vacuum and still has no direct vent to the atmosphere, so letting the vehicle sit for a long while still results in the fuel system ambiently pressurizing. A charcoal canister is used to combat this. Also called a vapor canister, this small black box is mounted near the gas tank above the rear axle. It's filled with activated charcoal, which naturally absorbs gasoline through some weird, fancy chemical reaction I know nothing about. Fuel vapors make their way into the charcoal canister through a metal line, where they coalesce and get trapped. The vapors stay here until the system is under vacuum, when they'll then be sucked into the engine. The thing is, there's no way to tell how much fuel vapor will end up here, how long it'll take to fill up, or what additives are in any given gasoline. Because of the random incalculable amount of fuel vapor entering the engine at any given time, that throws off your air-fuel ratio, and the O2 sensors have to adjust by very precise amounts, which is difficult for a single upstream sensor responsible for six cylinders. So to make the O2 sensor's job easier, a purge valve is set up on the EVAP system that opens and closes at periodic intervals so the ECU can better regulate the amount of fuel entering the engine, which directly improves your MPG. When you start up your Jeep for the day, you can actually hear the purge valve working, as it should to release the stored fuel vapors in the charcoal canister. This basic setup is how 97 models work with the charcoal canister instead mounted in the engine bay. 1998 plus models have a system that looks like this with a leak detection pump located in the engine bay which has a test line connected to the charcoal canister. The leak detection pump or LDP has a diaphragm that runs off the engine vacuum. By working with the ECU it closes the purge valve and moves the diaphragm up and down to pressurize the EVAP system. 
When the system reaches a set pressure, that only being about 1 psi, the diaphragm stops and a sensor verifies the system can hold pressure for a set amount of time, which is about 1 minute. If the system maintains pressure, a valve inside the LDP opens to let that pressure be absorbed by the engine, and to avoid depressurizing the system too quickly, it's mixed with outside air taken from the LDP's own air filter. A fun fact you probably didn't know, the 98 Plus XJ actually has two air filters. The EVAP system air filter is located in the back corner of the engine bay. Anyway, if the EVAP system fails to hold pressure for one minute, that means it's leaking. So the LDP sends a fault code to the ECU which activates the check engine light, either P0442 or P0456 for a small leak. If the LDP can't pressurize the system at all, it'll assume there's a large leak and display P0455. But, just because the LDP can't pressurize the system, doesn't mean it has a leak. It could mean the vacuum diaphragm is broken inside the pump, in which case you'll need to replace it. The LDP performs this check every 1-3 to three engine cycles. I don't really know what decides whether or not it does the test, all I know is 1-3 to three engine cycles. So to summarize everything, fuel vapor is collected from the gas tank and stored in the charcoal canister. It's then routed to a purge valve which opens periodically to let that vapor into the engine. A leak detection pump is run off the engine vacuum which pressurizes the EVAP system every now and then. A sensor in the leak detection pump reads if it holds pressure, slowly loses pressure, or can't pressurize at all. If the system passes the pressure test, a one-way valve opens in the leak detection pump to let the fuel vapors into the engine, mixing them with outside air from its own filter. If the system loses pressure, the ECU displays an error code for an EVAP leak. So there's a lot of moving parts inside the leak detection pump, which is why people usually say to replace that first. It is a moderately common failure point, but considering an OEM replacement can cost upwards of $250, I've found a way to test the pump itself using Nerf Rival Balls. Firstly, you're going to need a scan tool just like this basic $20 one from Walmart. Using this, you can clear the fault codes, which we need to do. So, first plug in the scanner and read what codes you have. You can see mine displays all three errors somehow, uh, which can mean there's a leak or the LDP is malfunctioning, so let's narrow that down. Uh, before I continue, note the easiest way to find where your EVAP leak is, is to smoke test it. So, basically, you just plug in a smoke machine, the little test port here, and uh, pump some smoke through it and see where it leaks out. Uh, so you can take it to a mechanic and have them do that, or you can build your own smoke machine. Um, but both of those options cost money. My method doesn't cost any money, so long as you've got a scan tool and some Nerf ammo. So we know that if the LDP can't pressurize, it displays the large leak EVAP code. So, I'm going to test that. In order to do that, I'm going to unplug this hose right here. This goes to the charcoal canister and the rest of the EVAP system. I will then shove this Nerf ball in this hose. Now that's going to create the LDP's own separated vacuum. When the LDP performs its test, it should be able to hold pressure within itself. If it doesn't, then we know this is the thing that needs to be replaced. If it does, then we know it's working properly. Now this thing only does a test every one to three engine cycles. Now, an engine cycle is the engine being started cold, warming up to operating temperature, and cooling all the way back down again. So there's no way for me to tell when the last test cycle was done. So this might not work right away. So clear the EVAP codes, start the engine, and put your hand on the leak detection pump. Be patient, wait a few minutes. If it's on its cycle, you'll hear and feel the diaphragm inside moving. It'll wobble back and forth a little bit, stop for a few seconds, and then start wobbling again. It'll do this about five times to build pressure. Once it stops, wait around for another minute or so and you'll hear the purge valve start ticking. Once this starts running, the leak test is done. If you started the engine and nothing happens with the LDP, it's just not on its third engine cycle, so go drive around until the engine is at operating temperature and then shut the Jeep off to let it cool down for a few hours. There is also a chance the LDP didn't do anything because its electronics have failed, but there is a separate error code for that I'll explain more later. 
So assuming you felt the LDP moving and the purge valve started running, head back over to the dash and see if the CEL came back on. If it didn't, that means the LDP is working properly because it was able to hold pressure within itself. If the CEL did come back, displaying an EVAP leak, then you know the leak detection pump has internal damage and needs to be replaced. Or your Nerf ball isn't fully seated. Using the Nerf ball method, we can actually test the integrity of the rest of the EVAP system. So assuming your leak detection pump is working properly, go ahead and plug it back in and head down to the charcoal canister. These things are made of plastic and can easily crack. Obviously with a crack in it, you'll have an EVAP leak. So unplug the lines for the fuel tank and the purge valve and plug them in one way or another. Ideally use something other than tape, but you get the idea. Now by performing the same test, we can see how each section of the EVAP system does. Using this method, I was able to determine my EVAP leak was coming from the gas tank because only after connecting the tank to the rest of the EVAP system did my check engine light come back on. That could very well be the gas cap, but this was the first thing I replaced when I heard EVAP leak. The seal on the cap is good, so that's not the problem. The leak could be in the fuel filler hoses, the fuel pump seal, the EVAP fitting on top of the tank or the line that runs off of it, or a hole in the gas tank itself, all four of those requiring it to be removed. Probably the most common place for the leak though is the metal line that runs from the canister to the tank. The metal rusts and rots away, creating a leak. I've since replaced that metal line with a rubber hose, and you should too. About 4 feet of 5 16 rated fuel hose will do the trick. So, let's recap on some common failure points of the EVAP system. The number one spot I'd say is that metal line from the gas tank to the charcoal canister. Number two, any of the rubber fittings on the charcoal canister. Number three, a cracked charcoal canister. Number four, the rubber fittings on the intake manifold. And number five, internal failure of the leak detection pump. These all assuming you replaced your gas cap first. The LDP is a very complicated thing and can display its own error codes. It just won't in every case. So here's a table of all the EVAP related error codes the XJ can have. Most commonly, you're going to get leak codes because of the XJ's primitive EVAP system. But in the case you get any other ones, here you go. You can see error P1494 is an internal electrical failure of the leak detection pump. So if that happens, obviously you'll know it needs to be replaced. But if you have P0455, you very well could have a bad LDP. As you saw in my case though, the pump is working fine and there is actually an EVAP leak. So that concludes the grand tour of the EVAP system. I've been looking at that damn check engine light ever since I've owned this thing and I'm ready to make it go away. After replacing every single EVAP fitting, the purge valve, the charcoal canister, the tank line, my leak ended up being on top of the gas tank, so it just goes to show why you shouldn't throw parts at it. But to be fair though, everything I did replace was bad, and as I replaced things, I noticed gradual increases in miles per gallon, uh, so my entire EVAP system was fried from the beginning anyway. So I do need to drop the gas tank, and I figure if I'm going to take it out, may as well put something better in. I've got a ZJ Grand Cherokee 23 gallon tank right here. And in the next video, I'm going to document the ZJ gas tank swap. So stay tuned for that.